Welcome back to General Chemistry on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. We now have begun our study of basic quantum mechanics in general chemistry, and some of the important things to be able to do for an exam are to calculate wavelength and frequency and energy for something like a photon of light. So on an exam, you could easily be asked to calculate any of these three things, energy, frequency, or wavelength. And so I'm going to show you how to do these basic calculations in, these, in this video. And we're actually going to do three of them. One where we calculate frequency, another where we calculate frequency given a different piece of information, and then another one where we calculate wavelength. All right, so in our first problem, we want to calculate the energy of a photon with a frequency of 6.5 times 10 to the 18th hertz. And when you see this inverse seconds or seconds to the negative first units, that's the same thing as hertz or hz, which you see actually right here. So just trying to expose you to some different kinds of units. So if we're asked to calculate frequency, frequency is given by the Greek letter uh, nu, which sort of looks like a v. In fact, most people, when they describe this equation, they just say e equals hv. Technically, though, this is a nu, and it's the symbol for frequency. If we multiply the frequency times h, which is called Planck's constant, that will give us the energy of that photon in units of joules. Okay? Now, h is a constant, and really it's a constant you should memorize because in the course of general chemistry, you'll use it quite a bit. And eventually, if you take physical chemistry, you'll use it even more. h is a constant that's equal to 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34th joule seconds. Okay, this is joule time second. So if we take this constant and multiply by the frequency in hertz or inverse seconds, that should give us the energy. Okay, so our energy in this case would be equal to 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34th joule seconds multiplied by the frequency, here's our nu, that's 6.5 times 10 to the 18th per second. And I've already gone and calculated this, and it turns out that the energy of this one photon is going to be 4.31 times 10 to the minus 15th joules. All right. Now, again, these units make sense because the Planck's constant has units of seconds right here, and then the frequency is per second. So this is essentially seconds divided by seconds, so the second parts cancel out, and all you're left with is joules. Okay? And this is the kind of problem you'd be asked, probably the simplest kind, where you're given a frequency, calculate the energy. You could also be given a question where they give you the energy and ask you to calculate the frequency. In that case, you'd, be, uh, you'd flip which one you're solving for, but you'd use the same equation right here. Okay? Let's move on to the second question. We want to calculate the wavelength of a photon with a frequency of 1000 hertz. Now remember for the purpose of this problem, hertz is the same thing as inverse seconds or seconds to the minus first power, okay? All right, whenever you're having to interconvert between wavelength and frequency, it doesn't matter which one's given, you always use this equation. This equation, nu or v, this is our frequency. It's equal to the speed of light in a vacuum, which is this constant c, we'll come back to that in a minute, divided by the wavelength, which is given by the Greek letter lambda. Okay, so C is a constant. The speed of light in a vacuum is about 2.998 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. For the most part, when you do this on a general chemistry, chemistry exam, it's usually okay to round this to three times 10 to the eighth meters per second. Um, I've never run into a problem where you need so much accuracy that you have to use 2.998. It's pretty much always sufficient to use three times 10 to the eighth, although I'm gonna use the more accurate form here. So I'm gonna be solving here for wavelength, okay? So let's plug in what we know in this form. Our frequency is 1,000 hertz or 1,000 inverse seconds, okay? Our C is a constant that we should know and we should also memorize. 2.998 times 10 to the eighth meters per second, this is the speed of light, and then divided by lambda, which is our wavelength. Now we can do two things here to solve for wavelength. First, we can multiply both sides by the wavelength. That'll cancel it down here and bring the wavelength over to the left side. And then we can divide both sides by 1,000 hertz, and that will remove the 1,000 per seconds over here and basically swap it with where this lambda is, okay? And that's what I've done here. So divide both sides by 1,000 hertz. 1,000 ends up down here. And then multiply both sides by lambda. 
lambda will end up over here. And once you manipulate this algebraically, you will see that our wavelength, or lambda, is equal to 2.998 times 10 to the eighth meters per second divided by 1,000 per second. All right? And when you divide this out, you get that the wavelength is 2.998 times 10 to the fifth meters. And so in this problem, I was asked to calculate wavelength given a frequency. However, if I had been asked the opposite to calculate the frequency given a wavelength, I would still use the same equation. I would just have to manipulate it slightly differently. Okay? Now, this one over on the far right is not a hard problem. It's just out of these three, it's probably the more complicated one, okay? Recall that from the first problem, that if we know the frequency and, and we need to calculate the energy, we use this formula, E equals H nu, okay? Energy equals Planck's constant times the frequency. From the second problem, we also know that the frequency is equal to the speed of light divided by the wavelength. So nu equals C divided by lambda. Well, if we know that nu is equal to c over lambda, we can take c over lambda and substitute it in for nu in this equation right over here. And what that would give us is the energy E is equal to Planck's constant times the speed of light divided by lambda, all right? And if we kind of move those together, we get E equals hc over lambda. This is another form, basically, of this first equation that takes into account the second equation that's useful when we're asked to calculate energy, but we're given a wavelength instead of a frequency. Now, it is true, you could separately solve for frequency using the second equation and then plug that answer in here. But this, basically, memorizing this formula will save you a step. So we're asked to calculate the energy of a photon with a wavelength of 450 nanometers. So our energy is equal to hc over lambda. We know h, that's a Planck's constant. It's 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34th joule seconds. The speed of light is 2.998 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. And then we divide by the wavelength. Now, this is an important skill to be able to do and it only works for nanometers, okay? We have the wavelength given in units of nanometers. It's 450 nanometers. This is a very common uh, range of wavelengths to give. If you want a quick way to convert this to meters, and you can prove this to yourself mathematically, but I swear to you it's true. If you're given nanometers, take this number and just multiply it by 10 to the minus ninth, and that converts it to meters. So the reason I have to put meters is because my speed of light is in terms of meters, so the meters have to cancel with each other. I can't just put the 450 nanometers down here to call it even. The units would not cancel appropriately. So 450 nanometers is equal to 450 times 10 to the minus 9th meters. In fact, if I had 7,000 nanometers, let's say 7,000 nanometers, then this would be 7,000 times 10 to the minus 9th meters. Okay. And in any case, once I multiply or divide all this out, I get that the energy of this photon is 4.41 times 10 to the minus 19 joules, all right? And so this last type of problem, again, is useful when you're asked to calculate energy given the wavelength of a photon or an electron or something like that, all right? So this video, I hope I've effectively covered the three basic kind of problems that you can have in general chemistry where you're asked to calculate or interconvert between energy, frequency, and wavelength. Um, in the next video, we're going to discuss something called the de Broglie wavelength. Some people pronounce it de Broglie wavelength, but it's de Broglie. And we'll see there's another quantity we can actually calculate there, and that's actually the momentum. All right? So hopefully you liked this video. Please give me a like and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications, and please join me in the next video. Thank you.